Hi guys, I have been debating whether or not to do what I'm about to share with you for um, almost the entire time that we have been um, putting things online for people to watch. Uh, we want to provide the sermon. Uh, we want, when we're able to, to provide some sort of Bible class or sermon study. We've done the podcast on talking together, all these things we want to continue to do. Um, but those of you who know me, who are members of the congregation, know um, that um, I have trouble sticking to one thing sometimes. Um, and this is something I really wanted to do, but I wasn't sure how it would be received. Um, and I hope it's received well. Um, I love and have a, uh, for a long time, I guess always, loved children's literature. And, um, and I just want to read. I, I want to do something for fun. Um, and I love fairy tales. And I think fairy tales uh, are something that that have um, have been changed so that they're not helpful anymore, but they used to serve a great purpose and have great value. They would, um, by going into the imaginary world, um, we were able to prepare our children uh, for this fallen world that we live in, um, and also for the good news of the gospel, the happily ever after that is is not fantasy, but is true because Christ has come and, and he died and he rose um, and he has given us his perfect and eternal life. So, so we the the fairy tale, um, at least for a while, for a period of time, was was something that that helped children begin to understand. Um, I want to say it the the rhythm, the true rhythm of of what it means uh, to be God's people, um, but to be God's people um, in a fallen fallen world. Um, and 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 so I, I think the old fairy tales. Uh, many of them, um, even though they talk about um, things that aren't real, um, they're really pointing to something that's very real and very important uh, for for children and for us as adults to remember. Um, so I've always loved them um, as a as a father, as a pastor. Um, I've just grown to love them more and more the older I get. So I want to read um, a fairy tale. Um, and I don't know who's going to listen. If it's going to be for kids, that's great. If it's for um, adults, um, I, I, I hope somebody out there enjoys it. Um, we'll continue to provide um, the other things that we have been providing as much as we're able to do. But this is something I can do very quickly. And honestly, it's just, for me, it's just fun. So I hope you'll, you'll excuse me uh, for doing something just for fun. Um, maybe there'll be some value. Maybe it'll be fun for you too. If not, that's okay. Um, just move on to the next thing, I guess. The, the fairy tale that I'm going to read is called The Light Princess um, by George MacDonald. This is probably my, my favorite of all fairy tales. And conveniently, it's also one that I'm guessing many of you have, have never heard before. Um, so there'll be some things that sound familiar, um, but it's a story... Um, that that I, I hope um, is is new for a lot of you, um, and one that that you'll be able to appreciate greatly. Uh, so what follows is too long to read all at once. So what follows is just the first couple of chapters. Each chapter is just uh, like a page or two. Um, so I'll read a couple of chapters uh, once a week. Um, I don't know, maybe more often than that, because it's hard to follow a story if it's once a week. Um, but if you like it, if you like what you're about to hear, do me a favor and hit like. Um, you can share it if you want. Hit like or hit a comment. Uh, let, let me know. Give me some encouragement if it's something that you think is worth continuing. All right? God bless you all. I hope you enjoy it. Today we will read chapters 1 and 2 of The Light Princess. Let me get this right. The Light Princess by George MacDonald, one of my favorite fairy tale authors. By the way, you know, they say don't judge a book by its cover. I'm pretty sure this isn't the original cover of this book because what you see on the cover here has absolutely nothing to do with the story that I'm about to read to you. This story is about a princess, a very light one. Uh, as I said, we're going to read chapters one and two. The chapters are very short. Once upon a time, so long ago that I have quite forgotten the date, there lived a king and a queen who had no children. And the king said to himself, All the queens of my acquaintances have children, some three, some seven, and some as many as twelve. And my queen has not one. 
I feel ill used. So he made up his mind to be cross with his wife about it. But she bore it all like a good patient queen, as she was. Then the king grew very cross indeed. But the queen pretended to take it all as a joke, and a very good one, too. Why don't you have any daughters, at least, said he. I don't say sons, that might be too much to expect. I am sure, dear king, I am very sorry, said the queen. And so you ought to be, retorted the king. You're not going to make a virtue of that, I hope. But he was not an ill-tempered king. In any moment of less importance, he would have let the queen have her own way with, with all of his heart. This, however, was an affair of state. The queen smiled. You must have patience with a lady, you know, dear king, said she. She was indeed a very nice queen, and heartily sorry that she could not oblige the king immediately. The king tried to have patience, but he succeeded very badly. It was more than he deserved, therefore, when at last the queen gave him a daughter, as lovely a little princess as ever cried. That's the end of chapter one. Chapter two is entitled, Won't I Just? Chapter two. The day drew near when the infant must be christened. The king wrote all the invitations with his own hand. So, of course, somebody was forgotten. Now, it does not generally matter if somebody is forgotten. Only you must mind who. Unfortunately, the king forgot without intending to forget. And so the chance fell upon the princess, Machaminoid, which was awkward for the princess was the king's own sister, and he ought not to have forgotten her. But she had made herself so disagreeable to the old king, their father, that he had forgotten her in making his will. And so it was no wonder that her brother forgot her in writing his invitations. But poor relations don't do anything to keep you in mind of them. Why, why would they? The king could not see into the garret she lived in, could he? She was a sour, spiteful creature. The wrinkles of contempt crossed the wrinkles of peevishness, and they made her face as full of wrinkles as a pat of butter. If ever a king could be justified in forgetting anybody, this king was justified in forgetting his sister, even at a christening. She looked very odd, too. Her forehead was as large as all the rest of her face, and it projected over it like a precipice. When she was angry, her little eyes flashed blue. When she hated anybody, they shone yellow and green. What they looked like when she loved anybody, I do not know, for I never heard of her loving anybody but herself. And I do not think she could have managed that if she somehow had not gotten used to herself. But what made it highly imprudent in the king to forget her was this. She was awfully clever. In fact, she was a witch. And when she bewitched anybody, he very soon had enough of it. For she beat all the wicked fairies in wickedness and all the clever ones in cleverness. She despised all the modes we read of in history in which offended fairies and witches have taken their revenge. And therefore, after waiting and waiting in vain for an invitation, she made up her mind at last to go without one and make the whole family miserable, just like the princess she was. So she put on her best gown, went to the palace, was kindly received by the happy monarch who forgot that he had forgotten her and took her place in the procession to the royal chapel. When they were all gathered about the font, she contrived to get next to it and throw something into the water, after which she maintained a very respectful demeanor until the water was applied to the child's face. But at that moment, she turned around in her place three times and muttered the following words loud enough for those beside her to hear. 
light of spirit by my charms, light of body every part, never weary human arms, only crush thy parents' heart. Well, they all thought she had lost her wits and was repeating some foolish nursery rhyme, but a shudder went through the whole of them, notwithstanding. The baby, on the contrary, began to laugh and crow, while the nurse gave a start and a smothered cry, for she thought she had been struck with paralysis. She could no longer feel the baby in her arms, but she clasped it tight and said nothing. The mischief was done. This is the end of chapter two.